This is important, you better listen. This is about me and you. Not meant to scare us, meant to prepare us. Safety all the way through. Habangi Sindra, Habangi Jirho, Sumar Balayti. Kya ka khublayti, ki ja ka patpa, chinya da ken yuki.
Welcome to Talir. This is a place called Bud. This is budding forth for a new life. And we are Capuchins working for the renewal of the society and the church. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, every one of you from different parts of the world, all the way from Argentina, Chile, uh, Brazil, up to Vietnam, and down from Zambia up to Northern Europe. We are people from different parts of the world, but fully involved into the struggles of the people. We are really in utter confusion of what's really happening. What's the message you are getting? Today being the Pentecost, a wonderful time of revival, a radical change. We are expecting good health and firm hope that the God spirit may imbibe in this world, that we may get healed, that we may be part of this healing ministry of God. We are very happy to have most of you coming from the field, coming directly, some of you are coming directly from the hospitals. Some of you are in the hospitals, participating into the struggles of the people, looking their breath, struggling for their breath as you are struggling. We honor each and every one of you. And we are, most of you are religious congregations, uh, wonderful uh, brothers and sisters from different parts of the congregations. We are also having uh, a good number of uh, women participation from the CBCA Commission for Women. I think nearly 70 of them are there. And uh, we have got an excellent team of uh, three medical doctors. And most of your participants are also from the medical field. So we have a lot of uh, questions to clarify. And uh, before we introduce, we invoke the Lord's blessing. May I request our provincial, because this particular mission, the online mission of this Talir, <laughs> is a brainchild of our minister provincial, Father Matthew, was uh, um, brought out to this particular online ministry to reach out to the entire part of the society, humanity. So I may I welcome Father Matthew uh, from Trichy, from our provincial Curia, to lead us, give us a short message and lead us into your prayer. Then we'll introduce the doctors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we thank you, very especially for this day of Pentecost. You have been showering on the church the blessings of fortitude, the blessings of wisdom, understanding, knowledge and all that is necessary for a new beginning. As we are today starting this ministry of making people available so that they could discuss among themselves regarding the ministry of healing, a special privilege, a charism that is given to all of us religious. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and for the protection that we enjoy in this pandemic. And at this time, we bring to your protection the whole world, very especially all those who are affected with this COVID. May your healing hand touch them, heal them, bring them joy and comfort in their life and in their family, and in their organizations. May all of us who are working for this kingdom, your kingdom, and in this pandemic, in the healing service, may your hand reach out to them through us so that whoever we touch, to whomever we may contact, they may have the grace of healing, the strength of life, the joy of life in their own family. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, I'm really happy 
to address you all at the beginning of this new venture from our Thalir Animation Center. We are Capuchins working in this part of the world, trying to reach out to the marginalized, trying to help in their own struggle, trying to be their neighbor in all their walks of life. And this pandemic COVID has really challenged us in our ministry. How to reach out to people at this time was a great debate. And fortunately, with the help of our own friends and friends from all over the world, we were able to reach out to them <clears throat> on different level. And very especially at the personal level of giving our own support in their financial needs, in their social organization, in their own surroundings, and much more through our pastoral activities of prayer, solidarity with them, and through this online ministry, reaching out to many people. My dear brothers and sisters, this special meeting that we have organized for our own ministry, the different part of the world, so many of us, our brothers and sisters are actively engaged, showing the powerful hand of God, a healing hand of God, the presence of God through our ministry. Coming together for discussions like this is going to enlighten us and help us and discussion of different parts of the world and the way that we are dealing with the situation is going to help each other so that all of us can do the maximum, the best possible. And today, I'm happy that more than 700 of us are gathered, and I'm sure there are many more behind us too. And from all over 17 countries and more, and very especially today, I thank our guest speakers, Dr. Dave Akra, a Capuchin, Sister Dr. Martina SJC, and Dr. Jerry Joseph YFS, uh, our third order organization. From all these experts, we are going to listen to what God is willing to tell us, teach us, guide us. So we thank them, first of all, for their availability and for their expertise and for all that they are going to be in this time of dialogue, personal, from their own experience and from the different parts of the world with our own experience we are going to reach out to people with more vigor. On this day of the Pentecost, we really started a good work. May God bless you. May God help you. May God guide you so that in whatever we are going to do, let us all do it for the pleasure of God. May God in his goodness guide us through his Holy Spirit. Thank you one and all, and I wish you all the best. I wish also very specially Father Nitya, who is organizing from Talir, and his assistant Joseph, and all the rest who are behind this, uh, this type of uh, what, online ministry, that God in his goodness may give them also good health of mind and body to continue this good ministry so that it reaches out to most of the people which can give us which can give to people consolation, guidance, directions for their way of life. Thank you, brothers. God bless you all. And Thank sisters you. too. <laughs> Thank you, Father Matthew. Uh, we'll straight away go for the three sessions. Uh, dear friends, uh, we have got uh, uh, three experts, actually. Uh, we have got Dr. Dev Akhara, 
and he has um, uh, MBBS also MD in psychiatry. He will be giving us. Basics will give it is followed. Our, uh, our internet is not good. So it's gone. So the, for the, uh, they will give us uh, our introduction. That is followed by uh, the um, uh, sister Martina. Dr. Martina will give us about how we have to live. Because sometimes we live our community life as it was old, some three years before, four years before, everything, eating together, praying together, television together. So this is uh, some caution uh, sister wants to contribute to us. And Dr. Jerry Joseph, who will be giving us about this, uh, yeah, how to care for the elders, also people with the diabetics and hypertension, a specific support group, how to do it. So these three are an excellent combination. Already we have got two, three sessions about that, how to present it. So we'll straight away we'll go and give the time for each of them. One after another, they'll be giving us, followed by uh, the question answers. So there'll be a one hour of inputs by three of them and followed by some 20 minutes, 30 minutes will be inputs, uh, uh, your question answers will be there. You may also ask your questions in the group later. So don't worry about what's uh, very short time over. Your question answer plus the WhatsApp group is there. So you can present your question in the WhatsApp group. Then the doctor's available time also I have given and some of do's and don'ts, what Sister Martina has given is uh, distributed to all of you in the PDF file. At the end of it, please make a printout and hang it in all the communities to follow it up. This is very, very good. And the timing, the three doctors are available almost all through the year. So you can always get their help and guidance. They are, so those things are also given in the uh, guidance, ma the sh slip of paper. So uh, the timing is the, which time they are available. Other times also you can ask, but certainly your answers, your question will be answered. Some guidelines also is given. May I ask request directly for the dev to start the session. Now after there will be like a like talk show, all the three of them will be available. You can raise your question. Uh, Brother Joseph, Father Joseph will be guiding us in the logistics. Thank you. Father Dev, welcome Father. Uh, thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Father Nitya, for uh, inviting me for this uh, international session, particularly to the uh, religious. Uh, I am uh, sure that many have a lot of information about the coronavirus and the corona pandemic. Uh, but uh, as you have uh, gone through the information pamphlet, uh, today I will be particularly focusing on the COVID pandemic uh, mutation and uh, variant. Uh, because uh, we are in a, a special stage of the pandemic. Uh, being a psychiatrist, many may be thinking how I, 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 how I, I can share about it. Because currently I am uh, posted in the COVID uh, wards and working as a COVID duty MO. So the last uh, years, uh, last uh, few months I had been uh, with them. So on that, on the, that, that is one of the basis in which I am uh, sharing with the clinical experience of dealing with the COVID patients. So we'll uh, directly uh, go through the... Uh, uh, we'll go to the topic. And myself, uh, Dr. Dave Augustin Nakara is a Capitan Friar from the St. Thomas Province from Kerala. Uh, is the slides uh, visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue. Okay, okay. 
so we'll be uh, just uh, dealing with the different phases of uh, corona and the mutation and variants because uh, rest all things regarding the um, safety measures uh, regarding the virus everything you know but we this uh, knowledge will help us to be more cautious and more uh, responsible uh, religious in uh, dealing with the current pandemic so when the corona pandemic began in the uh, 2020 uh, by the beginning of the january uh, when we look into the religious circles whether it is in the catholic or non catholic Uh, there we see a leap of faith why is i say a leap of faith because when the medical fraternity or the this medical profession uh, uh, came up uh, with uh, suggestions regarding the handling of uh, handling of this pandemic like uh, you must keep social distancing you must uh, you must keep social distancing you must wash your hands keep uh, use of sanitizers quarantine and all uh, people uh, never uh, took it in a very serious manner and they many even uh, people in the re- uh, religious circles told like, oh it's nothing beyond faith so we can do whatever we like and all and we roamed about uh, had gatherings uh, we make made use of the opportunities which had as the as religious leaders Uh, uh to move into the society interact with the people and all uh, along with the help which he had given to the uh, people and all but it had its own toll so what, what where we are where we are starting now as in the uh, news which came in the indian express recent news we have lost 168 priests and 143 nuns across india when we take the Uh, statistics all throughout the world it will be a huge number understand that these are the leaders which were uh, about uh, which were uh, people who were supposed to lead the people in all ways whether it in the social uh, area spiritual area in the economics or in the uh, de- de- development of the society so we had big toll also many of us have lost our own relatives and all so in now many of us have become cautious about dealing with the virus so uh, let me remind you about the uh, uh, wording from sirach not only us g- people can guide god can guide us uh, through various ways so one of the ways is through the medical professional in the current pandemic on your physicians for their services for the lord created them for their gift of healing comes from the most high the lord created medicines out of the earth and the sensible will not despise them i tell this because recently we had uh, 26 of our friars from our province affected with covid but the response which the medical fraternity got from them was uh, different some were very adamant that they were not uh, ready to keep the oxygen mask while even in the icu or also had some uh, bad experience from these religious people that's why i am telling this in particularly so when we look into the uh, pandemic stage we are in the stage 4 like the virus is not confined to any a, a, any place it is everywhere wherever you look you will see the virus that's why a particular instruction is given to us in the medical professional that what Uh, whomever you come across take them as a covid positive patient unless otherwise covid so we uh, remain in our ops remain in our wards with all these gadgets all these uh, protective equipments to fight against covid so we are in the fourth stage of the pandemic which is beyond control so here we will must be socially responsible to help our uh, brethren to help our humanity so we are j- just uh, an idea into the mutations and variants like we all know that we have cells in our body millions of cells in our body and each cell has got a uh, nucleus and it has got a genetic material or gene so each person has unique genes similarly virus also has got genetic material and it is uh it has uh different gene codings in the 
uh, that genetic material. But coronavirus it is an RNA virus. There are two types of genetic materials, RNA and DNA. DNAs are capable of uh, replicating, that is producing, multiplying, but RNA itself cannot multiply. Uh, these genetic materials are coded in uh, using the six letters, A, G, C, T, and U, that is uh, based on some um, uh, uh, nucleotides called adeno adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Even in our body, even in the uh, case of viruses, everywhere we'll see this genetic material. And this order of this genetic material decides the behavior of each cell, behavior of organism, everything. So, so when coming to the um, coronavirus, RNA virus, so it cannot replicate by itself. It needs help of an other cell, a living cell, to replicate. So when we look uh, into the corona, uh, uh, the origins, when we, it actually it is seen in, uh, it belongs to SARS virus, uh, SARS category virus, and it is originally seen in animals. Somehow it has come into human beings, likely to be uh, the consumption of uh, the uh, uh, like wild animals. Some say now there are uh, some postulations telling that it was created by China by uh, say a biological warfare. But whatever will be the case, it is an RNA virus. It needs help of an another living cell. So this coronavirus is making use of human cells for replication. So what happens is that, as you seen in the picture, it will attach the human cell, enter into the human cell. It will release its RNA and will incorporate this RNA into our nucleus our uh, DNA in the nucleus and will make use of the mechanism of the DNA uh, within the cell to replicate, to produce an, another virus. So from a single virus, single cell, making use of our own cell, it will produce thousands of virus uh, progenies. So this virus will go and infect the other viruses. So this is what is happening. So from a single cell, uh, numerous viruses are produced. So, when, uh, when this replication or production is going on, the genetic material, this, uh, that four letter codes are uh, reproduced. So, in the process of reproducing, in the process of copying, there will be errors happening. So, these errors are called mutations. And, and these mutations will produce a different kind of behavior for a virus. So that is called a variant, that is called corona variant. So the uh, scientists which studied the corona in the beginning of 2020, now come across same corona with different kinds of behavior. It is called variant. So how it has happened? It has happened because corona spreading as a pandemic uh, entered into different ethnic populations and uh, populations which has different kinds of uh, genetics and because of multiplying in, in huge numbers, it itself underwent different kind of genetic changes and produced different kinds of variants. So in order to prevent the production of variants, we will have to slow down the replication of the viruses. So I and you and everyone has got a role in preventing the forming of new kinds of variants. If we are preventing the spread of the virus by following the safety measures, we will be preventing the origin of the new variants. So as if in a copier machine or as if in a copying, when the copying process is uh, taking place in a huge numbers, the errors are happening, mutations are happening, variants are ha coming up. So we have different variants coming up like a uh, United Kingdom variant, South African variant, Brazil variant, and each variant has a uh, different kind of characteristic. One of the things which we have observed is that most of them are highly infective, like uh, they may not be causing a very serious infection, but they will be spreading faster than the coronaviruses, which were isolated in the beginning of the 2020s. So Indian variant is called B1, B.1.617. 
it is not so dangerous but it is very highly infective and the current vaccine is also useful for that so the many questions which you are uh, asked regarding this mutation and variants is that will there be more new corona variants surely there will be new variants coming up and this uh, virus will go on multiplying in uh, different kinds of ethnic population are people more at risk for getting sick people are more at risk of getting infectivity but the seriousness or the danger of the infections may be very low because virus uh, modify itself in such a way that it survives it spreads more so if a virus get into a person and go uh, creates a very serious infection that person may not go out he may be confined to the room so the pro- chance of infecting others will be less so the virus replication is in such a way that it doesn't cause us much serious Ill- illness but it will uh, produce uh, more infectivity like it will be infecting more people uh, will the covid 19 vaccines work till now uh, the studies are shown that uh, vaccine is uh, efficient for the current variant strains are there new or different things you should do uh, now to keep your families there is nothing new it should be done the same safety protocols are to be carried out just see this picture like one person uh, had the corona infection he gave, he uh, came into contact with three persons but the third guy Uh, the person was using a face mask even though he was in the community he was using the face mask so he prevented the infection to move to the second stage but the other two guys gave the infection the second guy gave the infection to three people but from that uh, uh, among that three people that person had used sanitizer sanitizer efficiently so uh, he had uh, kept his hands clean and he stopped the pro further progression of the infection and the uh, other guy which he tried to transmit infection one guy prevented it by keeping the social distancing in the further level another guy he when he understood he is a religious he understood that he has got fever he came for a meeting and he understood that he developed fever and he had himself and he prevented further community infection so each response here following the rules uh, safety rules will prevent the further spreading of the infection and will help prevent the developing of the new variant so that is the uh, key principle of preventing the spread of the infection also as a religious one thing which i have come across is that uh, we are uh, we are the leaders people take into uh, uh, take our messages very seriously so the messages we uh, send messages we share is very serious very important so uh, who ask us that we must prevent the infodemic like wrong information we must prevent the wrong information as a spiritual leaders as a religious leaders as a leaders of the community we have the responsibility of preventing the spreading of the wrong information preventing people from getting panic so the same thing happens uh, with the uh, same scenario with the preventing of the infodemic like uh, you ch- send a message uh, the per- this one first person didn't send a rumor uh, to the group chat because he understood that it is nothing scientific in this another person double checked with the facts and found that it is not true and he prevented the further transmission of the uh, wrong information other person got their news from the trusted sources and he uh, prevented this uh, in, uh, this uh, message from getting passed on and the other person asked how do you know that this is true and he also blocked it so that is one of the role currently in which uh, the religious also has to uh, play so as uh, let me conclude with this slide like a man uh, is giving his testimony in our home we have samosas every weekend for past one year and till now our family is protected from covid infection our neighbors even though they had taken two doses of vaccination they had covid infection and was cured only after week after a week 
though there are no scientific evidence that samosas are good at preventing covid from my personal experience i can say samosas are good at preventing covid i know that some medical lobbies are trying to disapprove my claim so let me conclude saying that uh, we are in a particular juncture uh, uh, of the history of humanity uh, our actions will decide what will be tomorrow so our uh, each action counts from uh, right from our uh, prior life to the life of social responsibility counts so let us be uh, truthful to the call like we will be sharing on a truth info, true information uh, to our own brother so let me conclude thank you once again to father nithya and all the staff in the talib for giving me this opportunity and as father nithya has announced uh, if anyone is interested to uh, talk regarding things or even if anyone is uh, worried about the mental health issues uh, following the covid they can contact over the phone or can use the uh, mail id so thank you once again thank you father dev it's a very very helpful for us very good introduction because we are really not very clear about with this medical and the technical things very simplified very clearly are simplified and made it very uh, helpful for us to guide others also uh, thank you for the dev dev is also not only a doctor but also psychologist and psychiatrist thank you, thank you yeah and he's available every day the late in the evening 8:30 to 9:30 is available for us for our help and guidance when you want to guide uh, get uh, guides also now i'm re- i'm happy to invite yeah ga anyone can Martina. contact me for that one thank you father yes father yeah 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 actually the fathers the, the all the three doctors are fully involved with the service different places eh? that is why they are given little extra time other times also you can call but whatsapp is always ready you can raise your question now dr machina is familiar to our talil group women to women issues there she already given she is a gynecologist mbbs and ms and uh, she has uh, already twice she has been familiar with our uh, medical help and guidance and support she is from uh, 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 sisters of st joseph and uh, cluny and we are really happy, happy to have sister she will be guiding us about this uh, do's and don'ts we have what to have to do in personal life community life you know pastoral life in our social apostolate and all these levels we are fully involved we are not able to reject but she has come up with very clear concrete uh, guidelines welcome sister marchina sister your mic is new. mic Mike, Mike, sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Father. And uh, I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Can I share the screen? Yes. Yes. i just go ahead with the class guidelines for priests and religious during covid father dev had already given a beautiful introductions the need of this uh, uh, webinar is mainly we are worried and shocked about many of our priests being lost and religious being lost during this pandemic more than the first one the second one in the past year already father dev had put we have lost nearly 177 Hundred and eighty priests and hundred and forty-eight, hundred and fifty religious. So it is very shocking to know uh, that it is uh, a great loss for the church and for the religious congregations. And we totally understand for the priests that their main calling is to be the pastors, to be there for their people in the time of need, supporting the families facing the loss of loved ones, offering the sacrifice of mass. praying for the dead and conducting their funeral service while this is their duty we thank and appreciate their courage as they do so but putting their own lives at risk so this is the time it's an extraordinary time and we need an extraordinary measures 
So we are going to have just few things to think about. Preventive and early action is the response. Uh, already Father Dave has talked about the variant mutant and India has got a double, double mutant COVID. And uh, recent research so far, when the first COVID came, we were told uh, any contact you had, any contact with the surface, just clean it immediately or don't open the door with your hand, but with your elbow. So it was understood first the transmission was by a surface, by contacting the surface, we were getting the disease. But the recent research has told that this pandemic, this variant spreads even through the air. So it is an airborne. When a small crowd gathers, even if it is for 15 minutes, in that group, even if one person is infected, the whole group can get affected or infected within that 15 minutes of gathering. I stress on that, the time, uh, the amount of time that we stand together, we stay together, matters a lot, lot for this pandemic. So this virus, this variant is very contagious and virulent. And just to talk about few symptoms with, uh, which can be presented for COVID, this pandemic COVID has no specific symptoms. The first one we said, they, they usually have fever, body pain and common cold and throat pain. But this uh, pandemic, it can have, you can have any kind of symptoms running from starting from body ache and uh, loss of appetite, loss of smell, fatigue, runny nose, even some come with loose tooth, diarrhea, fever, dry cough, sneeze, anything. So you have to understand that you can be an asymptomatic carriers in spite of even having a vaccine. So there, this is very particularly a dangerous situation. So this pandemic reminds us, this uh, variant reminds us that to not to come into uh, groups, avoid the small group meetings. So the route of transmission, as I said, when you cough, when you talk, when you sing, when you loudly speak, it comes as that you spill the droplets or you spread through the air, the disease is spread through the air not alone in the surface. You can see in this slide that uh, all of them are wearing a mask, but still they are able to spread the virus because they remain without any having a social distance. And if the condition is poorly ventilated, the danger is high. Next, coming to, we talk about a preventive measure. Already, Sir Dave, her Father Dave was told that uh, wearing masks, avoiding a crowded places, washing hands, quarantining at home, avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth, etc. So it is advisable that all who listen, all who are listening to this webinar, priests, religious, lay people, anyone, the only thing that we can take a uh, fight against this pandemic is take the vaccine as early as possible. So talking about the vaccine, many have myths, many have facts. We are all carried with different ideas of social medias. But the truth is, in order to fight against the COVID, we all need to take vaccine is the only fact. So it is impossible. The first question, can this vaccine give you COVID again? The impo it is impossible for the vaccine to give you COVID-19 because the vaccines use different strategies to deliver just one harmless protein from this COVID-2 virus to boost our immune system. So the vaccine cannot give you the COVID, but the infection we receive from outside gives you the infection. The, the second question is, the vaccine was developed so quickly, so is it safe? But the data that has been released and reviewed by the FDA has showed that these vaccines are very safe. And uh, as Father Dave had already mentioned, that these seem to work even protect against this variant strain also. So that is the thing. Can a pregnant woman get the vaccine? Yes. Under their choice, they can get vaccinated. And also, can people with allergies get the vaccine? Yeah, people who have allergic to uh, bee sting, latex, or foods, any kind of foods or pets, they may feel that they can, whether they can go for a vaccine. But it is, uh, it is safe for them to get vaccine. Only that if they are allergic to vaccine, then it is a problem. So the next question is, I have medical problems. Can I take the uh, vaccine? Uh, the CDC recommends that especially people with high risk, like type 2 diabetes, obesity, chronic disease, with kidney disease, sickle cell disease, all of them need, must take COVID vaccine because if they contract COVID infection, 
they have severe infections and if they go into a severe uh, clinical conditions so uh, they need to take the vaccine but we will tell what they have to do father dr jerry will talk about it and but people with weakened immune system like hiv patients they can take the vaccine but the safety and the, the limitation of vaccine is less for them and next question is once i am fully vaccinated do you do i need to wear more wearing mask or keep the social distance definitely in some country they had announced that now you can go without mask and you don't need any precautions but as of our country uh, definitely we need to still take the precautions of wearing mask social distancing and hand hygiene and can the vaccine change my dna already dna what is dna and rna sir has explained so it is a, the corona virus is an rna virus the vaccine is going to act against the rna the dna is a the genetic material which is present inside the cell so that is not going to be affected so our uh, cells will not be affected because of the vaccine should i get vaccine if i had a covid infection yes if you had a covid infection uh, we advise them to take the vaccine after 8 uh, weeks that is after 2 months or at least 3 months after 3 months but people who have got uh, vaccine uh, taken a plasma therapy they need to take vaccine after 3 months uh, so why i stress on vaccine some you see the common people they say i take vaccine because i have elders in my home i need to protect them and another say i take vaccine because i need to make i want to contribute to the society in stopping the virus spreading so others say i take the vaccine because i want to be a model in the institution where i work and another say i want to take vaccine because i have children in my family i want them to be safe so if different people are motivated in different ways so now we can talk about uh, the for the priest uh, there are certain do's and don'ts so when offering a regular mass or occasions like marriages or other services like praying for the sick or funeral services and there are certain regulations we need to follow the basic thing if you understand it is spread through the air so we need to avoid gathering in crowds even it is a small crowd the time matters so when celebrating mass even if except for an assistant avoid others within the church at the live masses always even if it is an assistant next to you always maintain a safe distance you can see in the picture even this in case you have to distribute the communion the priest need to wear the mask and the face shield that remains a double safety for the priest and always give the communion in hands and also masses like occasions like marriages burials and funeral services uh, as the government also says that funeral services of marriages now it is said less than 10 people but it is advisable the minimum the number the minimum the spread and also i i, adv I advise if is it necessary that you need to be in person for the funeral service or is it necessary that the marriage has to take place or if it is by compulsion that you have to be there you need to take the full protection of taking the sanitizer wearing the mask and also using the face shield and definitely following the social distance and also keep all the ceremonies as short as possible so the time that you spend us together is limited so the spread also is limited the next one is um, the virus is considered as airborne so that is why we take all these precautions and physical distancing even every activity of the mass even coming to receive the communion or even sitting in the church all need to be uh, all have to follow the rule of social distance wearing the mask and sanitization kindly avoid con celebrated mass because in case you need to con celebrate please maintain a social distance of 6 feet and singing at the mass it is preferable to avoid live singing singing or speaking loudly without a mask spreads the virus very fast at these times actually playing the hymns digitally is best the concentration of the aerosol uh, uh, in the concert aerosol released by the combination of speaking or breathing more than 4 minutes is equivalent to the amount of aerosol emitted for 30 seconds of singing or coughing and use of microphones it is preferable that the persons doing the reading also use the mask 
as microphones are spoken to into be uh, spoken into by consecutive speakers who remove their mask and infection can be picked up there it is if the use of microphone cannot be avoided a delay of 5 minutes after sanitizing the instrument then you can use the microphone always use the hand sanitizer before and after touching the microphone and mask while having the mask while saying the mask covering well the nose and mouth is to be used at all time even when reading the word of god even when preaching please use the mask without removing it in public events always use at least n95 mask and prior to entering the mask or meeting people or going out of the parish house in all these things you need to sanitize and cover wear the mask keep the social distance even if you are living in the same house kindly keep the social distance and use the mask wear the mask and sanitize and even if you are speaking to the same person same people in the same house uh, uh, it is better to wear the mask because from the community one person may go out and come in so it is advisable to use the mask and keep the social distance don't crowd together and even if you come together the time matters a lot washing of one hands after every interaction or use of hand sanitizer or preferably avoid contact with any persons and home visits avoid home visits even for people who have other health problem or other needs if need is compelling the priest should always wear n95 mask covering the nose and the mouth and should not remove the mask for the sake of drinking water or sometimes they offer food to eat food including while praying it would be better if they can pray for the people over the phone while they are alone or back at their residence uh, talking consoling counseling people over the phone should be an alternative thing we need to take up find ways of comforting the suffering people without having to meet them physically uh, we see many things have turned online uh, progress so i think even our apostolate needs to take the help of social media and work in a creative way to spread uh, the good news of god and confession in person to be discouraged at this pandemic time so now the talking about guidelines for religious communities brothers sisters for living together in the communities the precautions they need to take against covid 19 so when they have to live in the common areas even in the community wear mask cloth or n95 mask constantly social distance to be maintained of 6 feet regular washing of hands sanitation of hands on regular basis speaking in a soft voice to avoid spread of droplets sanitization of the area frequently and talking about in the chapel sitting at a distance of 6 feet that means in one line two on the extreme in the next line one in the middle and singing in a soft voice to avoid spreading of the droplets wearing a mask constantly sanitization of the hands frequently and sanitization of the chapel it will be advised uh, for sometimes in the pandemic avoid coming together even for common prayer or meals if possible and in the refectory social distance to be maintained sitting again at a distance of 6 feet chairs to be fixed in the refectory to maintain a social distance avoid sitting opposite to each other rather only at an angle and sanitation is not the refectory after every meals and whenever it is needed washing of hands before handling food avoid keeping any personal belonging in the refectory wearing of mask when serving the food or washing of plates changing the plate dusters after every meal and also avoid visitors in the house whenever you go out come or come in have a bath change of clothes while returning from out and use a mask at house when speaking to anyone always when you are outdoors and now we can talk about certain precautions that we need to take as always kept on saying from the beginning of covid clean your hands cough or sneeze in your elbows avoid touching your eyes nose mouth limit social gathering or time spent in crowded places avoid close contact with someone who is sick and clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces again and again we say this repeatedly but for us at this time of summer drink enough water particularly during this month stay well hydrated because good hydration boosts our immune system and also 
those are the mild irritation of throat or mild uh, cough uh, it is they say that using an a bitter din gargle bitter din gargle kills the virus in the throat so it is available bitter din mouthwash you can use the bitter din mouthwash uh, three to four times in a day and also we see in the picture the physical distance to be kept at six feet either in whichever way right or left front or back or in angle the six feet distance should be maintained the next is vitamin booster the community can take a vitamin booster daily and that will help the whole, all people to boost the immunity it is available as a combination which is combined of vitamin c zinc and vitamin d3 which is come available as combinations and now talking about covid by itself we will have when when should i get worried or when should i meet the uh, physician so the early symptoms it was said early that fever fatigue and dry cough but nowadays it can be just a body pain without fever or running nose sore throat or shortness of breath or just diarrhea so any symptoms during this pandemic first you have to think whether it is covid then only if the covid is ruled out only we think of the other diseases at this pandemic time so please be alert any symptoms or mild symptoms you have to first think whether it is a covid infection so you need to take necessary precautions but don't get panic because the covid what happens the first one to four or five days the covid infection is the symptoms are due to infection due to infection so these four to five days it is better we take a symptomatic treatment if you have body pain you take body uh, uh, paracetamol if you have cough or sneezing you take cetirizine so like this symptomatically you take the treatment but after fourth or fifth day if you have the symptoms uh, proceeds uh, it is because of the antibodies in our body acting against this infection which gives all the symptoms so uh, like body ache extreme fatigue clouding of mind nasal congestion even redness of eye sore throat headache muscle pain or joint pain sometimes also some people may have skin rashes nausea vomiting a diarrhea is seen nowadays as a common symptom in our areas chillness or dizziness loss of taste and taste and smell or loss of appetite so when do we need to worry like if you have a shortness of breath or breathlessness confusion or persistent pain over the chest or the temperature is 101 and above then definitely we need to be alerted then we all would have been aware aware now by now checking the oxygen saturation by using the pulse oximeter so in the room here comfortably sitting your saturation should be 95 and above there may so uh, it is advisable to check the pulse uh, oxygen saturation in our communities or in the house sometimes when the oxygen saturation falls Uh, some people will come with the symptoms of irritability or anxiety or kind of a low mood or extreme fatigueness when we check their saturation tend to be low and about talking about oxygen saturation if your saturation is over 94 95 nothing to be worried if it is less than 94 you all that you need is you need to be monitored closely or if it is around 90 to 92 don't panic but you need to visit the doctor and take a proper precaution but people who have already having a chronic disease like diabetes hypertension kidney disease or any other thing they need to go at the earliest to take the opinion of the doctors and actions the early symptoms suppose you have uh, been contacted a covid 19 infected person or you have any mild symptom the first thing that we need to do is self isolate isolate yourself dr dev had put in a beautiful picture saying that isolation or covering wearing the mask sanitizing uh, social distance see all that reduces the spread of infection so when when all the more when we live in the community with a small mild symptom or the early symptom the first thing that all of us have to do is self isolate and take symptomatic treatment and continue the vitamin boosters and take your regular medications for diabetes hypertension or heart disease keep yourself good hydrated and also symptomatically if you have body pain you can take paracetamol but don't take any other painkillers but you need to take enough rest at least 8 hours of sleep during these days and also there are some techniques which will help our oxygen level in our body where you can see in the picture called proning proning for self care 
that is lying down on your stomach not on your back so lying down on your stomach with the help of two three pillows maybe for 30 minutes to 2 hours not only those are affected all of us can start doing this as a precaution or as an irregular exercise for 30 to 2 30 minutes to 2 hours lying down on your stomach the next to 30 minutes to 2 hours lying down on the right side the next 30 to 30 minutes to 2 hours just sitting up for a while the next 30 minutes to 2 hours lying on the left side again come back to the prone position but don't try proning soon after your meals and don't prone for a long time or when it is discomfortable to you next one is uh, when should you get a test for covid so at the earliest symptoms it is better you go for a covid test that is called rt pcr test uh, most often what happens when you go very early the test may be negative but we still uh, take all precautions according to the symptoms or sometimes we may be a asymptomatic carriers uh, while a person is waiting for the test again self isolation is a must uh, please be aware having a negative test does not mean that the person does not have infection it indicates sometimes it can be a false negative so hence caution continues by way of isolations and taking other precautions and if there is any suspicions about covid please repeat the test after 5 days and again when a person is infected and testing positive kindly meet the doctor get advice of the doctor and they decide according to your symptoms and your medical conditions whether you need home care or you need hospital admissions and also you start with vitamin boosters and those who have a suspicion or you have contacted with the covid people who is positive we advise them as a prophylaxis sometimes tablet ivermectin 12 mg every 48 hours for three doses if there is body pain or fever we give them dolo that is paracetamol or and uh, pantocid for an uh, antacid effect and also uh, in the community i advise you need to have enough pulse oximeter not just one or at least few pulse oximeter and uh, thermometer which is also to be sanitized after each person's use so everybody can check whether your saturation or those who have kind of any early symptoms check your saturations check your temperature so saturation is below 94 you need to consult the doctor or if you have persistently having a fever 101 and above you need to consult the doctor and do the necessary investigations another thing we need to learn is for all of us those who are infected or affected a deep breathing exercise you can see in the picture sitting and taking a deep breath or in a proning position taking a brief, deep breath or on your back taking a deep breath so this should be as an a regular exercise in order to keep our lungs open in spite of the infection and again uh, any asymptomatic patient as i told if you come in contact tablet ivermectin helps in a way little bit and next vaccination and post vaccination if a person has had an uh, infected by covid 19 i said already after 8 weeks or after 2 months they can take the vaccination or if a patient has taken a plasma therapy for the previous infection then they need to they can take the vaccination after 3 to 6 months after discussing with their doctor but people who have not been infected it is important to get vaccinated at the earliest following the receiving the both doses it can happen that a person may get infected but the severity may be very less and it is reduced so please be aware after getting covid 19 infection the person can get again or again reinfected so you need to follow all precautions at all time last and but finally the new thing that is threatening us is mucormycosis black fungi so after the corona treatment now they are fighting with this mucormycosis that is a fungal infection it happens because of the long term use of oxygen for covid treatment sometimes they are using a high steroid uh, injections for people who are already having a diabetes undergoing a covid treatment they are pushed to a more uh, hyperglycemic state so where mucor mycosis and also people who wearing a mask the wet mask for long time so it is advisable when you use the mask please change it as and when necessary don't use the same mask if it is wet or don't use the same mask again the next day if you are using the cloth mask please wash every day dry completely then use it again those so, are so wearing n95 mask please dry it in the air at least for 72 hours next you after you 
after using in order to use again again just to say a few words people who had uh, this diabetes or steroid therapy all those people had uh, this mucor mycosis or black fungus which is uh, the signs are they may have facial pain or they have a kind of a headache after the covid or nasal block or like sinusitis like infections or kind of an a loss of vision they should immediately rush to the doctors for the consultation and take the appropriate treatment okay so at the end of my uh, session i wish you all a good health and a quick recovery quick recovery in case you get infected by covid virus take care and stay safe just another word of caution some most of the religious and priests they think corona is there is no corona it is just a myth or it's just scam it is all political medical people's advantage so i don't worry about it i don't need a mask let's party and celebrate no this is a misplaced bravery but sometimes other group of people once they are infected oh my god i got a corona that's it i am going to die i cannot get the bed i cannot get oxygen that is the end of my life so that is a misplaced fear but all we need to do is be aware and alert take all the precautions so that we save ourselves and others dear priests and religious at the end of the session without you priests there is no church we need you you can sympathize but you need need to be prudent your duty demands but don't forget you are still a fragile human being covid virus does not know whether you are a bishop whether you are a priest whether you are administrator whether you are a superior or provincial or general council or general god does not desire your death you can still serve using a social media dear religious sisters rules regulations are important but at this moment prevention and safety of your sisters lives are more precious you need to be careful for the sake of the whole community remain safe not for your sake but for the sake of the church without you priests there is no church we need you thank you very joseph we say super franciscan very enthusiastic very much committed that we all should be well and he himself is dedicated his whole life for this people with pediatric treatment and uh, is uh, he himself is having some sore throat now but still he is uh, ready to help us uh, for the, the dr jerry joseph is going to give us a special focus about elders the care for the elders the care for people with diabetes and hypertension all these are very concrete because these are the people easily affected welcome father jerry joseph uh, dr jerry joseph the floor is yours thank you thank you father nitya the talil center it is a great opportunity and hope all of you will be in a position to make good use of what is being told to you there are certain set of things which i would like to particularly mention after having discussed in detail by father dev and sister josephine we know many things about covid and at times we know more than doctors the problem is we believe in certain set of things what we feel to be right and we hold it strong and the only consultation what we do is we consult google or we try to consult whichever app you have and we see as many number of youtube videos or the other medical applications which have not been validated so far so the first and foremost request is we have covid 19 as a disease a disease which has to be taken care of a disease for which you should be cautious a disease about which 
you should be able to manage but one thing i would like to tell you very straight forward is even at times of covid don't lose your common sense your rationality and your helping intention for others because social distancing keeping yourself isolated does not practically mean that you cannot recognize people who are the with you or people who are away from you who are in need of help so helping someone at the right time and the right place is something that has still to be done as a human person and more because most of you are from religious congregations in elderly most of the time what happens is they will have a set of disease which may go unnoticed or at times another set of disease for which they are taking care of but most of the time when an elderly person is there in the family there are people who will be taking care of them and the problem that occurs is at times care of the caregiver is never got because the person who is being cared for will be looked after by many but the person who cares the concerned may not be in a position to get himself checked or treated so starting with a personal note most of you may be caregivers in your workplaces health care starts with self care be careful about what you do there's no one who's going to ask you have you done this or have you done that but i am telling you very much be sure that you are taking care of yourself then make sure that you are able to take care of others because in the flight when the air hostess talks about the safety features they show about the mask being dropped from the cabin when the cabin pressure goes down and they say put a mask for yourself make sure you are comfortable then help others what i am trying to stress here is we know the covid disease which is in and around us make sure that you stay safe and you are the right person to decide what is the safety message that you need dev and martina have excellent really done the work in present day what i would like to stress is few of the questions as i was going through in the chat box and otherwise the covid shield vaccine previously it was told that the duration between the first dose and the second dose was 4 to 6 weeks now who themselves say that the difference from the first dose to the second dose for a covid shield is 12 to 16 weeks there's no question of questioning it current recommendation is that you have a vaccine if it is covid shield the second dose should be after 12 to 16 weeks particularly after at 16 weeks because it is being found out that the maximum distance between the first and the second dose the better for the person who is taking getting the injection and in case of covax which is yet another vaccine that is being used the period mentioned is 4 to 6 weeks previously it was still lesser so the recognition that the safe distance between the first dose and the second dose is important and it doesn't mean that this time is being prolonged just because vaccines are not available that may be a reason or may not be but the current recommendation stays good so after covid shield the vaccination the second dose is after 12 to 16 weeks for covax it is 4 to 6 weeks dev and sister martin were talking about sars what is sars sars s a r s stands for severe acute respiratory syndrome severe acute respiratory syndrome is sars and this is sars covid 
we name it as COVID-19 and the virus is the SARS-CoV-2. Here, there are a few things that I would like to particularly mention before the topic at hand. The vaccine still, will you get a disease after the vaccine? The answer is, you might. Not that necessary, you will. But all the safety precautions and measures should hold good even after vaccination is done. And the vaccine once done generally happens to work after a period of two to three weeks. But mind it, you should have all the routine measures of precaution. What Father Dave and Sister Martina mentioned throughout and unless specified otherwise, every person you meet is a corona positive patient. So once you're traveling in a bus, you don't know the person who is going to stay next to you. But at the same time, I can tell you, given a choice, never ever skip the chance of protecting yourself. And the good thing about vaccination, so if you're getting a disease even after vaccination, what is the basic point of taking a vaccine? The important thing is, once you have a vaccine, the percentage of people who are getting disease after COVID shield is 0.04%, a very less in number. And a percentage of getting corona disease after COVAX is 0.03%. What I'm trying to say is, you know very well, this percentages may be small numbers, but for the person who gets the disease, it's a big, big thing altogether. So numbers doesn't count when you have a disease, with a high grade of mortality. Mortality means the chances of death. So when you are vaccinated and when you have a disease, the chances of going for a higher level of disease or having a severe infection maybe an aggravation in pneumonia or an aggravation in your alteration in your renal parameters, et cetera, may be less. And the chances of mortality are still less when you're vaccinated. So one thing I can very well tell you, this disease was not there previously. After a few years, maybe we may not be there at all. I can very well tell you in social studies, and geography, there will be a detailed lesson on the phases of corona during the year 2019, 20, and 21, and how people strive. Something like what we learn about the Black Death, the plague that has happened previously. So, we are people who are pioneers in this field, and we are people on whom how the vaccine works, how it is effective, and how the people should be protected takes place. There are no vaccines that have been developed over a period of eight months in medical history. But we can trust the vaccines that are done. I am a person who is a director in one of the medical colleges and the ethics board. Still we are getting requirements or requests for human testing of the vaccine. And something else I would like to mention is we talk a lot about medicines, but the right thing is always to contact the concerned doctor, the physician, before you make sure that you take a set of medicines. The only thing that is being suggested as precaution measures or in the medicine thing is 60,000 units of vitamin D3, which is taken two times in a week for two weeks, and thereafter for a period of once in a week for two weeks and then once in a month for three months. I'll repeat, the dose of vitamin D3 is 60,000 units. For the first two weeks, it is two times in a week. Maybe fix a day, say like Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday or Friday for two weeks. And once week for the next two weeks and thereafter monthly. The other thing that is useful is vitamin C. The natural substances that provide vitamin C are plenty. 
So use of vitamin C is helpful. We can get it as chewable tablets or tablets that uh, come as tablets proper and so on. So these are the only things that have been definitely proved other than the protections we are talking about. Something else what I'd like to mention is there was a confusion like what happens when you come after a work to your house or when you come after a work to your community. With the current state of disease, we had mentioned about the first wave, second wave and third wave. We are possibly in the second wave with the, all the possible risks that we may get a third wave, but we may be more acute. The possibility of the homecoming or coming to a community place after work, make sure that you remove the mask, drop it, and in a closed waste bin or a closed tub, and wash yourself, use sanitizer, use at least a surgical mask, and then go meet your elders and other members of the family. Never ever try to come out of your home and then go directly meet your children or your elder family members because you may do more harm to them than good. So make sure that you come out from a place anywhere. And once you have your mask, remove it off and place it in a container which has a lid to close it. And allow it to be destroyed in a proper manner. Bathe, use disinfectants, then wear a mask and come and meet others. This is particularly important for elderly people who have disease or any person who is more than 80 years of age. The other thing is, while using a mask, what is the purpose of a mask? The whole purpose of a mask is that you are protecting. But one thing I can very well tell you is, if you're using a mask, you should not adjust it. The intention of mask is not to wear a necklace. The intention of using a mask is to wear your, cover your face and your nose and make sure that it is fitting properly. Once that is not done, there's no point in wearing a mask, which is where the standard of the mask be. Avoid touching on the surface of the mask or make adjusting it at times. This is also yet another thing. Because we wear a mask, excellent. Then we keep adjusting the mask according to our own convenience, which should not be done. Secondly, when the work is done, remove the mask and dispose it safely. There are the specificities about mask is Dr. Joseph, yeah. Father. Yes, yes, Father. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, I, yes, I yes, can. Yes, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, what happens is when wearing a mask and disposing it off, what studies say is there are minimal benefits of wearing a mask with cloth. Avoid a cloth mask because it will prevent you from inhaling dust. So basically there are two things about a mask. One thing is you having a disease and giving it to others. And the other thing is you yourself contracting the disease. So given a choice, a cloth mask prevents you from 
dust or particles outside. So cloth mask is out of the scene. If you are wearing a mask, the ideal mask will be an N95 mask. And there is no condition in which you adjust the mask when you are using it, as mentioned previously. Second thing about which I would like to mention is, when using any of this thing, what I would like to say is, when using any of this thing, make sure that you are well hydrated. We are talking about hydration and most of the time what is mentioned is, drink two to four liters of fluid, whatever it may be, either juice or plain water or something. But what I can tell you is, the question at hand is, how much amount of urine output is there? So the amount of urine output should be of the range of 1.5 to 2 liters. In a cold climate, the amount of urine output that is possibly happening uh, with to, to get 1.5 liters of urine, the amount of water you have to take may be 2 to 2 and a half liters. But it may be 3 to 3 and a half liters when the temperature is hot. So what I'm trying to say is, the basic condition of using fluid is not that you have to drink three to four liters. Second main thing about using fluid is, what I'm trying, uh, main thing is, when you have a disease of the lung or the heart or the kidney, the doctor will specify that you should not be using certain amount of fluid, or you should be using only certain amount of fluid. Your fluid will be restricted. In such a condition, if you try to take fluid as three to four liters per day, inevitably, inevitably you are going to have a pulmonary problem. The fluid may accumulate in your lungs or in your hip or on your legs. And this might lead to further problems. So hydration basically means following the doctor's orders and making sure that you have the adequate output for a normal adult person, an output of 1.5 to 2 liters on an average is important. So the amount of water you have to drink is such a way that you have at least 1.5 to 2 liters of urine that is being produced. Thirdly, something else, something about the pulse oximeter. I'm sure that most of us would have seen a pulse oximeter, particularly when you are in the medical field. Put on the pulse oximeter. Once the pulse oximeter is on, it will ask, you have to insert the finger. Make sure that the place from where the light comes, you have to put in the pulse oximeter such a way that the nail remains at the site of the light. So what happens is the pulse oximeter starts sensing and suddenly you may get a value of 91, 90 percentage of oxygen. How do you read a pulse oximeter value? The pulse oximeter, oxygen saturation is read such a way that whether the person is in room air or whether the person is using a mask with oxygen. So the pulse oximeter value is given importance only when the waveform within the pulse oximeter, if the pulse oximeter provides a waveform, only when the waveform of the pulse oximeter is proper. Because till then, the pulse oximeter may shift its values from 92, 94, 96, or even less. But don't panic. Make sure that the pulse oximeter produces a value and an adequate waveform. So what are the pulse oximeter, oximeter values which you should consider to be critical? If you find a value of 92 or 93 percent of saturation in room air, it automatically means your oxygen saturation is less. So automatically you don't conclude that you have a problem. Invariably use another finger. Change sides, use on the other hand. And make sure that you record the values that you see. The two things particularly seen on a pulse oximeter are the pulse and the saturation. Saturation is of the range anywhere between 100 to 94 is supposed to be of the stable level. Provided this value is repeated, 
Once you get a value of 98 and all the other values are 92, after switching on both the sides and switching on the fingers, we should make sure that you consult. So it is an average value that matters. And invariably, otherwise, it is significant. Second thing in the pulse oximeter is the pulse. And third thing in the pulse oximeter, some pulse oximeters show the respiratory pattern and others show a pulse index or it's, a, it's called a perfusion index. This is the amount of oxygenation that takes place and amount of oxygen that will be carried within the capillaries of the body. So two things you have to take care. The light should come from the area of the nail bed and the reading will be taken when the finger is not moving. Make sure the instruments that you use regularly, pulse oximeter or a stethoscope, are being cleaned properly and when you are using it on another person or even on yourself. So the adequate agent should be used and wipe with a prescribed cloth or material whatsoever. Something else what I would like to mention about the process of, what do you say, mucomycosis, the black fungus. Sister mentioned about it. Normally, I was in the batch of 87 in Bangalore St. John's Medical College. And over the last 25 years, I have just seen three cases of mucomycosis till 2020. After which, I have seen around 30 to 35 cases of mucomycosis. My teachers were telling, they had seen an average of only four to eight cases in their whole career. The cause of mucomycosis may be in particular, one, diabetes, two, dose of steroids. What does diabetes or a high dose of steroids or a malignancy like cancer of any structure or an organ does? It produces immunosuppression. So the mucomycosis pores are normal common cells, and that is they are within the air and this comes to your nose in a normal thing, but your immunity prevents it from developing further. But here what happens? When a person is using uh, immunosuppressants or agents that should be used for this, way, like something like uh, steroids or something else like a agent for treatment of your cancer or already having an uncontrolled diabetes. In such a case, your immune system is compromised and this turns to become a pathogen, something that causes a disease. So this is how mucomycosis occurs. And it is called the black disease or the black fungus because it blocks the blood circulation and thereby prevents perfusion of the tissues. As a result of which, there will be death of the cells which turn black and hence the name, the black fungus. What happens is, it may affect the skin, it goes further to affect the tissues, it may further infiltrate to affect the bone, and there have been cases in Kerala particularly, where three or four patients, eyeball had to be removed, eviscerated, and eyeball had to be removed because the whole socket was full of mucomycosis. This infection can occur in any part, it may be an internal infection or an external infection. The understanding of the disease, the stabilization of the patient are important. Now, in people who are elderly, as we were mentioning, there are chances of diabetes. There are chances of hypertension. There are chances of other things like rheumatic disease or say like Parkinsonism and so on. All the applicable situations are to be continued in such a person. Since the very fact that there is corona, don't stretch on the corona alone. Make sure your diabetes is being treated, your hypertension is under control, and your other medications are at the right time and the right place. It is being told that when importance are given for coronavirus in particular, what is happening is invariably we tend to suppress the other diseases we have, or we make sure that. Corona is given the prime importance. But believe it, even before Corona, there were deaths which were non-documented, mainly because of hunger. 
mainly because of poor sanity, mainly because people could not survive. It is the survival of the fittest. Darwin would have said it. But we all are fit enough to help others who are in need. Make sure, even if you are under quarantine, even if you are maintaining your strict, aseptic or correct methods of not contracting the disease, make sure you recognize the people in need and do something. It may be in the form of monetary things or it may be in the form of providing the food. You don't fear the person with the disease, you fear the disease. That is all something that you used to always hear when you switch on the phone. And you take care of the person and it's your moral obligation to take care of a person in need. Previously, there were videos and snaps in which people who had the disease were being thrown out of the vehicles or being put badly disposed. A dignity, a human dignity is to be maintained irrespective of your disease condition. And before I conclude, I would like to tell you about a few things. First thing is, while being at home or being in your convent, don't keep switching on to the news and news alone. News keeps telling you big, great things that happen around. Fair enough. But the down scrolling things will be Corona has happened to such and such. Make sure that you see a news at least once per day and that will be enough. Switch, change the channels to something that makes you feel comfortable, something that relaxes you. It may be exercise on mindfulness or practices of meditation. And all of us have telephones. Contact people at your house, people who are your friends, because still it is not proved that COVID virus passes through the telephonic membrane or goes to the other person through the voice. Hopefully, no. And make sure you contact people who are with you, people who take care of you. Your main intention is that you take care of yourself and you make sure that others are at peace. I'm not talking about a Franciscan spirituality, but an ecologically friendly world. Even if you come out of your convent, within your compound, make sure that you wear a mask. Unless proved otherwise, every person you come in contact is a person with corona disease. But believe it, even if he is a corona patient, you don't become a sister or a person within a congregation. I didn't become a Franciscan from my birth. Before becoming a Franciscan, I am a Catholic. Before being a Catholic, I am a Christian. Before being a Christian, I'm a human being. So have the sense of reasoning, a common sense, and make sure that you are in a position to manage yourself and others accordingly. I know the time is limited, and they've been showing me since last five minutes or 10 minutes, there are only five minutes remaining. But hopefully we will be able to answer some of your questions. And we will have a definitely a group in which you can post the questions, your answers will be provided, and you will be able to contact one of us at some time or other in the day. And keep praying. Remember in our prayers, be safe and be at peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Jerry Joseph. That's a very, very practical. Some of the very important things you are you are, they are clarified because uh, some questions are also there. Uh, dear friends, I would like to inform you that this is not the end of the session because we can always continue clarifying your questions in the WhatsApp group because that will be answered by the three, the doctor's team. And also now we can, maybe we can have some 10 minutes. I can ask some questions, but you can keep three doctors together so they can answer some important clarification. Some questions have been written already. Some are asking about what about this Ayurvedic thing and some, uh, some problems they asked. Some are asking the uh, WhatsApp group only. 
that is what is the cause of may death after injection received and what about the ayurvedic medicine to treat the corona these are the some of the things um uh, yeah some more questions here for joseph will ask so we'll ask two three questions together a cluster of them but all the three of you among them yourself can decide how to who to answer So there is a question. Uh, yeah. First, the government said four to six weeks uh, gap should be there between the vaccination. Now they are told eight weeks, which is correct, and what is the procedure? Yeah. Previously, it was mentioned that uh, after COVID shield vaccine, the second dose can be had after a period of four to six weeks. But now. as i rightly mentioned the current recommendation is after covid shield vaccine the time gap is 12 to 16 weeks and after covax the time gap is 4 to 6 weeks one thing i can again tell you we are the people who are having the disease for the first time in the world and we are the people who are having the vaccines for the first time in the world so as to when the vaccine should be and how it will be identified as time and condition progress so the current recommendation is covishield vaccine the second dose after 12 to 16 weeks and covax after 4 to 6 weeks is it true that uh, uh, even after getting two doses of vaccination we still get to covid and there is a reference also dr agarwal had two vaccines i know of, i yeah i so i know i know yeah yeah because even after two doses of vaccine you definitely get to have the what do you say you might get the disease not that you will but the chances of having for a normal adult person the chances of having a mortality becomes less what i mean to say is the person has a pneumonia the extent and severity of the pneumonia becomes less the person has a renal insufficiency it may be well controlled but one thing in a person who already has an existing disease which is of a higher level corona infection is not or vaccination is not going to reduce its severity so for example a person who gets a cancer who is already having cancer already having renal insufficient on dialysis corona vaccination is not going to reduce it corona vaccination is always going to reduce the mortality due to corona and new, not due to the morbid condition so the main thing is vaccination is a must and previously you would be knowing that vaccine was not provided in india for people who are less than 18 years now vaccination is being provided even for children vaccination is recommended for people who are breastfeeding vaccination is recommended to our for mothers who are pregnant and this has already started elsewhere in canada in united states and so on so the fact is you may get a disease but severity from the covid infection the chances of mortality or you being called back by god immediately is reduced so that you have few more years to survive is it true that people with o positive blood group will not contract covid 19 it's a rumor sister or father dev anybody yeah yeah it's uh, i think it's a rumor because uh, they i i read in some whatsapp or the to youtube saying that uh, a positive uh, group people get uh, more affected by covid uh, o positive blood but i think this has to be studied by research we cannot now at present uh, definitely say that they will not contract or the a positive will get more this has to be studied by the research uh, work so that's not an uh, we, we cannot say it's a true because i know some people who my my relations my relations or the pa patients who are affected they, there are also o positive people so we cannot definitely say that o, o positive people will not be affected there is one more question when we wear a mask we inhale the same air in the mask most probably carbon dioxide this it red and does it reduce the oxygen level in us no because 
even if you cover your face there are muslim ladies who wear parda and you can mm. see their eyes alone not the nose or the face and still their oxygen levels are being maintained normally even if the parda is tight even if the mask is fitting properly you will get sufficient oxygen so as to maintain a saturation but in the beginning wearing a 95 fit tight fitting mask may not cause a problem but the it might be painful if the elastic is not sufficiently loose it should not be extra loose but it should be sufficiently loose so that you don't get a pain on both the ears and you don't get a gangrene on the nose because of the effect of the clip so make sure that the mask is tight enough and believe you can believe confidently that even after wearing a mask your oxygen level is fairly maintained so that you will live and there's no problem of reduced oxygen okay there is a suggestion from who that when you are doing a vigorous exercise uh, like uh, uh, involved in vigorous uh, activity uh, you uh, you may remove the mask uh, making sure that there are no people uh, around you uh, keeping the social distance thank you not a recovery from covid how long does a person remain infected can you repeat the question i didn't uh, hear after recovery from covid how long does a person remain infected infected uh, when after uh, um, when, uh, when uh, after usually it is done after uh, 14 days we will do rt after recover, we uh, claim someone or uh, we say someone is covid negative and his infectivity infectivity rate is zero as per the test but we know that uh, tests have a um, false uh, negative part negative. in which the the uh, the uh, every test has got a false negative part so uh, it that's why it is asked that even if you uh, turn to be negative remain in quarantine for 7 days so up to 7 days we have to wait uh, after a negative test and there is a question from a sister after the first dose of vaccine if one becomes positive what is the time space for the second dose um as it is said uh, once a patient who is a corona covid positive uh, for the second dose or the vaccination it is advisable at least they wait for 8 weeks that is a uh, 2 months already the guidelines also has extended the the space so it will more or less come to that but after the infection whether they have received a first dose or they have not received any dose uh, once they are infected better to wait for another 8 weeks to take the next dose thank you sir and there is a question hypertension is another issue in all the people due to corona and death so could you please explain how to handle it that is right dr jerry is the phone mic is mic is not yeah if if you are on plasma therapy you have to wait for a period of 6 months and if you get infection uh the preferable waiting period is 8 weeks yeah father joseph uh they talked about uh, hypertension sir hypertension. Okay. hypertension what was the question can you repeat it for me because uh, of this covid and corona yeah. and so on there is hypertension in people how to handle it father dev it is more of a tension than hypertension because most of the time what happens is if you get hypertension after corona there are chances that a single infection of corona the person may turn to be negative no one asks the question as when is a patient going to be infectious you get a certain set of symptoms which are highly non specific during this period of the time when you get this set of symptoms what happens is invariably 3 to 4 days before the symptoms start you are an infectious person and this keeps continuing even after you are negative otherwise but one thing i can tell you even in people who are found to be 
antigen negative what happens is there may be not to make anyone afraid or not to just to feel uncomfortable or not ruining your sleep and frankly speaking there are people who become antigen negative but still have the various functions of the systems being compromised or reduced there is a reduction in the ejection fraction of the heart that is the amount of blood that the heart pumps out there is a reduction in the kidney function which is shown by an increase in creatinine level there are chances of small hemorrhages within the brain and there are chances of progression of atelectasis or the non functioning of the alveoli in the lung all this may happen even after you are turn covid 19 so the period of safety and being careful even after covid 19 is very important uh, dear friends i think we are running short of time it's already we are um, extended the time there are so many questions please you can continue to ask uh, in the whatsapp and the whatsapp we are given all the powerpoints of uh, uh, dr sister martina dr dev and uh, they also we are given the do's and don'ts also in another one video please go through that and if you want to refer to any patient to the any of the doctors for your clarifications please keep a file about them ready first of all their age their gender their name and the reference of their previous uh, medical treatment and the doctor's uh, prescription all these things will be very helpful for uh, the three doctors team to guide you better otherwise just to give one thing they cannot give prescription so they always advise that you nearby some local doctors for your help that's one thing second thing is there are some other issues something has come third wave children all this thing how to give treatment what is the way to use this uh, local treatment and ayurvedic treatment probably the doctor's team will be ready to answer this one the next meeting in the meeting in the meeting we can also ask but we'll keep a meeting maybe another sunday around this time and you see whether it's okay this time is okay for you 3 to 4 maybe one hour you can have so that we'll be able to help you still better we, we think that this may go for one more two more months also so we can have this doctor's team available for our explanations Thank you so much. Maybe you can one ask more thing, Father. Yes, yes. Yeah, Father. Response from one or two of them, in particular, if they can. There are almost two fifty of them who have attended. So yes, whether we are in the right track or we may feel what ah. you are telling is right, but it is their perception that makes the difference. So preferably, if one or two of you can unmute yes. yourself or. father joseph can unmute for them and make sure that they talk out how they felt about the whole thing and we are new to it and we would like to progress in it with your recommendations yeah. maybe two or three can uh, give the response yeah, yeah. Uh, yes and uh, can hello I, yes. hello i would like to say that it was very informative session and it's very 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 enriching session thank you for organizing such a educative session and thanks to all the organizers and the speakers so it was very very clear in your presentation and we hope to have such more sessions thank you thank you, thank you. hello uh, Hello, yes. hello, Father. I'm Sister Smita speaking from Bihar, Hajipur, and I really uh, thank you so much for arranging such a wonderful uh, uh, this uh, workshop, and it is very much helpful for us. So thank you so much, and it was very clear. But you know what I feel? We are working in the villages and all, uh, so I feel that a, a guideline for the children for this uh, third wave. So if you know, sometime you can help us. Yeah, thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thank you, thank you, Sushma. We will try to get some more details about helping the children from the doctor's team. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else wants to give some comments? Any suggestions also? I think that's fine. I think. Uh, we will meet maybe after some time. Ah, uh, maybe you can give some concluding words. Ah, uh, the doctor's team. I'm very grateful to Dr. Jerry. Father. Hello, Father. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. 
thank you very much for organizing such a input inspirational session. Only just uh, between the second and the third speaker, a kind of repetition is there. If you could avoid maybe five, ten minutes only, it is being repeated themes, then it will more, more, very much uh, uh, informative and also a, a really it's a, not only encouraging, everybody can take to their lives and be an inspiration for others. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Father, can I speak? Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, Father, I'm very, very grateful to you for arranging this uh, talk. Uh, because many myths we had, different opinion we had, which is not correct actually. After listening to do these three doctors, I feel we gained more knowledge and confidence to face this disease. A fear has come down and I wish to have many more confidence like this. Please kindly arrange based on different topics, not just Corona in general. Thank you so much. Father. Thank you. Thank you. I think on the whole, it's very, very good, uh, very helpful. And uh, anybody else, I think for Lidwin, Sister Lidwin wanted to say something. Some sound was there. Yeah, thank you so much, Father Nitya and Brother Joseph there for arranging this particular session today. I am happy yeah. because uh, being a National Secretary of CCBI Women Commission, I had made it very sure and more than 78 of them have joined for today's program and many of them have lost their family members, their husband. So it was really helpful because it is now for them for the precautions in the family. And it was great to see our own uh, religious sister and religious priest talking to us and giving us guidelines, though it was priest community or religious community. But it was very, it is very helpful even in the family, even in the family, there are seven, eight people. So it is similar like community and the family. And I'm really grateful to you. And we are for waiting for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, sister. I think there is a good number of people are attending also from YouTube live. So there are some could not get the line, it seems. So they are asking about this. We'll try to give them the connections, the recorded messages. There are some problem in our line also. I thank you in a special way, Dr. Jerry Joseph, Father Dave, and Sister Martina for your sparing your precious time. You also came for two, three preparatory meetings, and this has helped a lot. Probably we'll come up with uh, many more questions for the next meeting. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, keep you. in touch with us. We will help whatever is best. So you can also give some proposals in the uh, WhatsApp or anything directly to us. In the the do's and don'ts, I have made a, a, a the PowerPoint, the PDF file. It means the guidelines are given. Addition to System Matilda. We can make use of it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Father. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Father. Doctors, all the three doctors, unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Sister Martina. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.